Hey guys, welcome back. Come join us for a few days exploring the raw and rugged coastline of the southwest. This stretch of Australia is so unlike anything I've seen before. It feels like we've stepped back in time. Surrounded by ancient granite formations, pristine beaches and dramatic sapphire blue waters that have got to be seen to be believed. I find this area remarkable. It's so rich in geological and maritime history. We could spend weeks here and still have so much to discover. And it would be impossible for us to capture all of the beauty and uniqueness of this region in one short video. So we haven't. Settle into part one and stay tuned for part two coming next week. Believe me. is all of the mess that we have accumulated up at Mark's place. Every day it seems like we've just been taking one more thing or like a couple of things like a particular pot or a pan or some clothing or like a computer gear and camera gear up there and I brought it all back downstairs and I just didn't realise we've taken so much stuff up there. Pots, pans, some of our bowls and cooking stuff, all our camera gear, I don't know. The stuff just coming out of <laughs> every single surface. And now I've got to do the job of putting it all back where it came from. I'm looking around and I don't know how it all fit in here. <laughs> I've slept. I think this place is looking pretty good. The day of moving. And there's a lot more obstacles in this garden than when we first came through. There's a camper trailer there and a boat there. So maneuvering may be an issue. We want to be heading directly that way. So I've got to somehow turn around this car and the 20 foot caravan in a space that really isn't 20 foot by 20 foot. But As you can see, this is exactly what I meant. To turn around, the width of the car with the caravan on really only leaves a couple of meters either side. This way, I'll literally be going back and forth, I don't know, a hundred times before I get enough movement to get around this tree and then out. This tree is the issue. And then there's the boat. So <laughs> get past the tree, then the boat, then we're up the driveway. And the tree is next to an old Bikiti caravan. Well, like, there's a little structure here as well. So, the structure, the tree, the boat. If we get past all of those, then we can head up the driveway. for a couple of days to check out heaps of different things and we're going to stay at a campground which is actually just right here Dax, called Cozy Corner East. It's a really cool free camp right next to the beach just about 20 k's outside of Albany but because it's a free camp you can't book it and I've read mixed things on wiki camps, whether if you come at 11 or past 11, sometimes it's fully booked or, you know, no spots taken, particularly for large vans. But if you get here by about 10, 10.30 when people are leaving, then we might be all right. So at the moment, there's no way for us to know if there are spaces. And obviously we've got the big rig in the back. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that because it is 10 to 10 in the morning, hopefully I've timed it right. Fingers crossed. Lap. Now, it's pretty busy, annoyingly, the caravan was just pulling out and a guy in front of us got that spot. You right there? Very close to that one. Oh my god, that's a little bit. This is so tight. And then stop there. A 
very tight campground. Well, Cozy Corner East does have some, well, some cozy corners. The campground itself is super spacious. There's larger sites up top where we are for bigger rigs and down closer to the beach, you've got tons of space for tents, pop tops and camper vans. When we stayed, camping was free. Now it's $15 per site during peak season, free for the rest of the year. Not bad for a campsite this close to Albany, this close to the beach and with toilets and a dump point on site too. All parked up, we were keen to get straight into the day and start exploring. But first, obviously, is a coffee. Filled yeah. up. Very hot though. Mm. That's fine. Patience. Patience is not my virtue. We know this. Particularly in the morning when all you want is your coffee, you don't want to have to wait for it. <laughs> That's it. I'm addicted to the stuff and you just need to wake up. It's all right, I'll leave it in the central compartment and when we go over all the bumps, it'll just kind of slowly fill up that cup holder. Cute little place. Yeah. I really like it. I like it. This is only, what, five minutes drive from hmm? Cozy Corner okay, at Cozy the coast. Corner campsite that we're at? They make it hard for you, don't they, these Cozy campgrounds? Corner campsite. nice to go to a cafe and not have to like make your own with an espresso pot, right? What to do in Albany, we're kind of using Cozy Corner as a bit of a you know, base. Albany's a great historic town, lots of Anzac history, lots of maritime history, you can check that out and loads of really cool natural sites like the the Natural Bridge. Yeah, and the Gap. And the, the Gap. Yep. And the Granite Skywalk. And the Granite Skywalk. Yeah. Okay, Granite Skywalk's the one I was thinking of. So we're gonna do it all and that camera is just completely facing me now. <laughs> <laughs> and you're cut out entirely. So, so Albie, coming for you. <laughs> well, that's how you know you're in the country, I guess. Yeah. When uh, farmers, rather than taking them through paddocks, just run their cattle straight down the main road. Some were going one way, others going the other way. There was a car kind of in the middle and they were just going round that. <laughs> Love it. So cool. So we've just rocked up at the Gap and Natural Bridge and apparently there's a little kind of man-made structure that goes mm. out across the water and then you can see like all the waves swirling underneath you and so on so yeah quick quick stop off yeah see what it's all about and then back in the car go for a swim at misery beach take advantage of some of this sun and get a little cool because it's getting quite warm yeah two brothers were standing side of the cliff and then one was hit in the back by a spear and the other one was hit in the back by a boomerang and the one that was hit in the back and fell in with a spear became a stingray and that's the barb on the back of its tail the one that was hit in the back by a boomerang and then fell in uh, turned into a shark and the boomerang is the fin on the top of a shark see how like indigenous people of the area explain stories to their ancestors of their ancestors through Dreamtime stories. That's cool. Definitely gives you another perspective when you're standing up on the big gap. Kind of brings an area of like, I don't know, spirituality, culture, um, rather than just staring into a big hole in the ground with waves crashing around, which is pretty cool anyway. But it's always nice to see the indigenous stories of a place and understand it before you go and look at it. Okay, let's see how well I can remember these signs. To understand how this natural bridge is formed, we'll go back a few million years. 
1,350 million years ago, or thereabouts, Australia collided with Antarctica. And when this happened, parts of the Earth's crust melted to form magma. This magma squeezed into layers between the indigenous rock called gneiss, with a silent G. And then over thousands of years, well, thousands and thousands of years, the constant battering of these waves penetrated the rock's joints, causing minerals to rapidly weather and form clay, which subsequently washed away, leaving the rock unstable, so that over time, parts of the rock crumbled into the ocean and formed this bridge. All right, science lesson over. Don't look down. Shut up, bitch. Oh, my tummy is going crazy. Look at our feet. Whoa. That is what? That is a good drop down to crashing waves. My tummy is going, it's doing somersaults. Try looking at it through a zoom lens. When you look down, it's like, it, it is the most weird sensation your, your literally your stomach skips a beat because you're like right down there with it looking through the viewfinder but you're also right up here above it i can't even explain it it's like very weird to do very weird it's making me very uh not usually scared of heights but this is making me like a little bit uh vertigo -esque. yeah especially when their steel structure is actually quite thin in comparison you know oh. <laughs> I'm going to start clammy hands. The pressure of holding the camera over the edge. Oh. It's too long, too heavy. After a morning spent in the sun, it was time to cool off. So we headed around the corner to Misery Reach to catch up with Dunk's dad, Mark. I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn. is a gem. It's protected from the winds, it's quite honestly everything you can wish for in a beach. And that dramatic granite backdrop is nuts. But this beach wasn't always so beautiful. If you're wondering like us where the name came from, a quick google will reveal that until 1978, two beaches down was a major whaling station. So regularly whale offal would wash ashore, staining the white sand and the now pristine waters a deep crimson red. But now with all of that behind us, this beach is back to being beautiful and a pretty epic spot to relax for the afternoon. Hold on tight. I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us.
So we've come up to Prongup National Park because we want to climb the Granite Skywalk, which is a two to two and a half hour hike, walk, scramble to the top of Castle Rock, which not to be confused with Castle Rock, which is in Game of Thrones. It's about a two kilometer walk up, so not long, but super steep. And it's essentially this really cool metal man-made skywalk staircase that goes all the way up to the top of the granite uh, boulder. And from the top, there's meant to be really cool views. Sunset's at seven, so we've got two hours to get up there. Just in time for the sunset, hopefully. If not, we'll see the sunset as we walk up to the top because we'll have potentially stopped to take too many videos and photos. Hoping that's not the case. But if it is, and we've brought our lights with us as well, so if we do walk down in the dark, at least you guys will be able to see our faces this time. <laughs> just started, sun's starting to go down, we're starting to get that perfect golden light. So when we get up there, depending on how long it takes us to get there, it should be amazing because it's been quite cloudy today, but as we've come more inland, the clouds are kind of burnt off, which is insane because climbing up, and you can hear from my breath, all this elevation to get to the top, you want to be able to see for a bit of distance and not just have a field of white in front of you. So how am I feeling about the walk, Soph? Yep. I'm excited to get to the top. So far, you're kind of in dense canopy cover. So um, yeah, just getting through it, to be honest. Getting into the business of stepping. So far, really impressed with this walk. You never know when you research something and it comes up on quite a lot of the touristy websites if it's gonna be a bit clinical, handrails everywhere, paved, slabbed uh, way up. But this has been a pretty good bush walk, which is really nice. I'd only really seen the photos of the top of the, of the granite skywalk. I have no idea. I mean, the bushwalk as well, which is really cool. Just about fitting through here. All right, we have made it. We did it. This is how it, much more harder it is when we're carrying camera equipment. <laughs> Should have just left it at the bottom and described the view instead. Jeez, it's pretty special though, isn't it? Ooh. 
360 degree views, perfectly punctuated by all this granite. I prefer if this was just a granite walk and you just climb on top of the rock, I'd be fine. When it's all man-made, I get a little worried that on that day someone wasn't paying attention. And they don't make it easy because you have to see it through the ground so you can see. Yeah. <laughs> when they say don't look down, you have no choice. <laughs> this time. We always think it's easy going down but it never is. Love you, be safe. Oh, I heard that. Gimbal. <laughs> Gimbal v granite. Granite is always going to win. This one's harder. I don't think I can carry the GoPro <laughs> and climb on this one so the GoPro is going to go in my mouth. You're going to get a foot shot looking down. All right, let's go catch the boy up. <laughs> Whenever I jump near the edge, your tongue's always pushing me back. <laughs> I haven't fallen yet, but then it only takes one time. Yeah. All right, what do you reckon? To drone or not to drone? That is the question. I'm thinking to drone, not to drone, because it's very windy over there. Not so much here, but we are kind of protected <laughs> and set up a time lapse to get the sunset that might be over there. But I'm trying to work out if we're high enough because it might just go down behind that mountain. So we'll see, lots All of right. decisions. Right. Drone it is. <laughs> Off she goes. Drone's in the air. Sony is on time lapse for the sunset. No idea what it's going to look like. As you can see, there's some pretty big clouds rolling in. Not sure what the sunset will turn out like, or the time lapse. I guess we'll find out in a minute. For everyone who's been watching our videos and commenting on the fact that we need a light, this is the first time we've been uh, caught out doing a sunset and have found an opportunity to chuck on the light. So we've got a loom cube light sitting on top of the Sony now, which is kind of obscuring my vision. So I hadn't really thought this through. When you're walking with it in front of you and you're trying to walk down, it's actually pretty hard to see the path, so I don't know how much I'll be doing, but at least now you can see me, and then I can use it to see the path when I'm not filming, so it's a win-win. And it's long overdue, isn't it, so? It is, I can't believe it's taking us this long to get one. <laughs> There's been probably our most commented item is the fact that we need torches for when we get caught out after dark, so to people like traveling with crow's feet and other subscribers, this is for you. All right, so what do you reckon? Bright enough? 
Can you see anything? Well, if I look up at the light now, and then I try and look on the ground, all I see is white braid, is like when you look at the sun. <laughs> yeah, so it's ruined your night vision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we'll keep uh, keep any talking to camera very short. Mm -hmm. maybe, I'll say. maybe she's just a little torch. Yeah. It's good though, brightens you right up. And is that at 100%? 50%. So that will double. That'll if we go need it to. twice as bright. Yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop looking at it. I have to. I can't see anything. That is so bright. Okay, I can't talk to camera. I'm gonna trip over something and break my Safety neck. Hazard. Well, hey. Yay! <laughs> you made it. Did. I'm glad we got these lights now. They've helped, haven't they? I mean, down there in the dark. I mean, I wouldn't be able to see you right now without it. <laughs> I can't see these steps on the back of the <laughs> There we go. Look at that. It's a bit of an over-the-top rig just to oh. <laughs> have a torch. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. But it doubles up for a torch for our feet. And it helps us see the camera or the camera see us, so that's a win. Let's get home. It is very dark. Thanks for watching, guys. Come join us next week in part two for a very different side of Albany. And quite possibly the worst beer review you've ever heard. For a hard-earned thirst, walking the Albany beaches, you want Wilson now. <laughs> that was so bad, eh? That was so bad. It. Have a good one.